Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews and many people at the beginning of the year decide, hey, I wanna start a home gym. So there are many of you that are beginners in the home gym realm. You may not be beginner lifters, but you may be beginners in building a home gym. So I wanna give you some mistakes that I've seen and I've learned after having a home gym over a decade and helping millions of people literally build theirs. Let's get into it. Okay, so the one of the biggest problems I see and mistake I see is buying the shiny stuff. Ooh, shiny. And not the essential stuff first. The reason is you go on Instagram and you see our page or you go on YouTube, you see our page, you go somewhere and you get these ads on really cool equipment. I'm thinking like jammer arms, I'm thinking all these cable attachments, all these different things. And you're like, man, I need that stuff because it's really cool, it's really versatile, I can use it. But you get that and you buy like a $1,000 pair of jammer arms and then you buy like a $150 barbell. Not a good idea. Buy the essential stuff first. Buy the stuff you actually use. Buy the stuff that has the max amount of versatility and those things are going to be the basics. Like most of the time, I would rather have more weight, more plates than just like a 225 pound set with a barbell and then I buy like other stuff. Because the amount of things that I can do and get strong with and get fit with with more plates is better and more than many other attachments. Okay, next one is buying too cheap equipment or buying too expensive equipment. So I have this phrase, I say this all the time, buy once, cry once. Like this is a big thing in the home gym community. There are so many different companies that are making stuff that on page look very similar. It's like the thing you see on Pinterest and it's like, wow, that's really cool. I can't wait to make it at home. Then you make it at home and it looks like crap. I've seen those finger paints you bring home and they look like crap. I've seen those finger paints you bring home and they suck. But, <laughs> but those are just renders. You get them in house and it's like, you compare them side by side, trust me, because I've actually done it. Um, Dude, they look, they're vastly different. So don't buy too cheap of stuff on the things that really matter, but also don't feel like you have to buy the super expensive stuff. There is a curve, right? Where you start to spend so much. If you spend more, like the gains you get on quality and versatility and stuff like that is so minuscule, if even there, that really like, you should probably be buying most of the time like middle road stuff. So nice stuff, but stuff that isn't overly expensive. There's many companies out there that do this. I think one that shines really well in this area is Rep Fitness right now. Like it's obvious that that's why they're winning, but also Titan Fitness has done a lot of good stuff in this realm too. Bells of Steel, those companies as well. Rogue Fitness still does it sometimes too, but their stuff can be more expensive because it's made in the US. Okay, next one is only considering the equipment and not the room that you're building the home gym in. Here's the reality. You're not just buying equipment. You're buying equipment to fill a space. And so if you don't measure your room and know where things are, like this is an instance, not checking out if you're using your garage where the garage track or the garage door opener actually is, and you just measure for what the ceiling height is, then you get it in, you realize, oh crap, I'm not going to be able to open my garage door. Those are things you need to watch out for. But also you actually want a space that is enjoyable to go into. So you're gonna need things like lighting. You're also gonna need insulation because you want it to be warm or cool. You're gonna want heating or AC. These are all things that you have to consider. Now, you can work out in a basic garage. Like my first home gym was a one car garage and had no insulation, has no heating, like it was not sexy at all. But I just got it done and that's the space of life that I was in. But I was also used to working out every day. If you're thinking, that suddenly, because you have a home gym, you're going to use it all the time, yet you never go to the gym, eh, may slow you down a little bit there because if you're not doing it now, I'm not saying that having a home gym won't allow you to have more convenience, but just because you have convenience doesn't mean you're gonna use it. Okay, next one is underestimating the floor protection. Like, I think some people are like, I'm gonna buy really nice equipment and then I'm gonna get foam tiles. <laughs> No, that would be like buying like a Bugatti and setting it outside of your duplex. You know, it's like, like there's just some things off, you know, like you need to make sure the flooring is nice flooring and you need to make sure it's the last flooring you're gonna put in there because if you don't put the flooring down first and you put the equipment down first, you're then gonna have to move all of that out put more flooring down and then put it down. And trust me, you do not want foam tiles. Mm. At a minimum, what you want is you want horse stall mats. Three quarter inch, 100 pound, four by six horse stall mats. That's the basic. Now, if you want nicer stuff, you can get rolled flooring, you can get tile flooring like I have, you can get better stuff. But 
for a majority of you, dude, go to your local tractor supply and get some horse stall mats and get them before you get your equipment, okay? Before the equipment even shows up, go for your garage or your home gym space. If it's in your home, you may wanna buy something a little bit nicer so it doesn't off gas and smell as bad, but don't underestimate the flooring. The cost that you are gonna have from dropping weights in your garage and hurting your concrete foundation is gonna cost more than the mats do. Just trust me, get the mats. Okay, next one, I hear this all the time. I'm gonna start a home gym when I save enough to have a full setup. No, don't do that. Just buy equipment over time. If, like, if you wanna buy it all at once and you've got the means to do it, go do it. But if you don't, just get started today. Like just buy a little bit and start working out at home. One thing I love to tell people, I think is a great idea. I got this from Ross Training. It was basically, this is what you should do. You should buy a piece of equipment and then when you've set a goal and met that goal, you should then reward yourself with new equipment. I think that's a great idea. So you should, instead of deciding, oh, I'm just gonna buy everything at once, but I'm gonna wait to do it, and so I'm not gonna work out, I'm just gonna sit here and just you know, loaf around until that equipment comes. No, get to work now, buy a little bit at a time, reward yourself with stuff. Don't feel like you have to have this creme de la gym set up before you actually start working out. Because what'll happen, you get that creme de la gym set up, set up, and you won't use it because you spent too much thinking about the money and not about the mind. Okay, next one, and this is a very specific piece of equipment, buying too cheap of a barbell. Don't buy a cheap barbell. It is the piece of equipment that you will likely use the most outside of maybe adjustable dumbbells, which you should also not buy cheap, but you should not buy a cheap barbell. Don't buy a hex nut barbell. I see them all the time. People have nice racks and then they got this cheap barbell. Spend money on the barbell. One, cause it's not crazy expensive. You can get a really freaking good bar for 200 bucks plus. Like really good bar, but buy something that's nice. That's gonna last. That's gonna be safe. That's gonna rotate that you're gonna use all the time and then pass it down to your kids. Okay, another one is buying too big of equipment. I see this, people are at CrossFit gyms or at the commercial gyms. They're like, oh, I do GHD sit-ups at my CrossFit gym. I want a GHD, don't do it. <laughs> like, I'm not saying it's not a good purchase, but they take up a ton of space and do one thing. Another one is a reverse hyper. I'm actually thinking about this now because I, I work out in a two car garage. I've got a three car garage, but I only use two of it really for gym equipment. I've got a reverse hyper GHD combo in there. I was thinking, oh, now that I got a combo unit, I'll use it more. I just don't. Like reverse hypers are just not a movement you do all the time. GHDs, I just do my GHRs on my Nordic bench because they're harder and better. But I, I'm thinking like, I sh I'm probably gonna remove that. I'm probably gonna get it out because it's just taking too much space. I think a lot of people feel that with equipment. So you're like, I use a leg press at the gym all the time. I'm gonna bring a leg press home. Listen, there are better uses of space for a home gym. I'm not saying if you love leg presses, put a leg press in there, but understand that the only cost is not the money and time you're spending. It's also the fact that it's gonna take up a ton of space. So consider that cost. Okay, this next one, see this all the time. This is a total rookie mistake, <laughs> but the beginner mistake is not buying storage. It's like you buy the equipment and then you get it home and then you start using it and then you realize, wait, I didn't buy plate storage. What am I gonna put my plates? No, I forgot. I didn't buy anything for my barbell. I bought this crazy expensive barbell. Where am I gonna put it? Oh, I'm just gonna set it on the concrete in the corner to collect dust and the end cap's gonna get all messed up. Yeah, don't do that. Buy storage ahead of time. Storage is not that expensive. Get something like wall control or omni control, some of those pegboard units, not very ex expensive. Get things that attach to your rack, get plate storage on your rack all sorts of things. You're spending money on the equipment, take care of it and get it out of the way so you have space to use your gym. Okay, this last one, it's kind of two parts, okay? Number one is not having a training plan. See this all the time. It's like, how do you expect to have a goal without a plan? Like nobody sets out on a journey and doesn't have a way to get, think about this. If you're going on a trip, you don't know how to get there, what do you do? You pull up Google Maps, right? It's because you got a plan to get there. Don't expect in your life, especially in fitness, to get to somewhere that you have no plan to get there. So in the gym, this matters in having a training plan, but another thing that's helpful is having somebody alongside of you to keep you accountable. So it can cost money, but sometimes it's just as helpful as having a friend that you can text, be like, I worked out today, this is what I did today, and you guys go back and forth, and it goes as far as having like an actual company that you can pay. There's companies like Future, Barbell Logic, companies like that, that they have coaches. And like, listen, coaches in terms of 
training plans I think is going away somewhat. Like it's kind of a commodity, AI can do it. But what I, AI can't replicate yet, maybe it can someday, but it's gonna be a while off I think, is having an accountability partner there that's helping you with your form, that's helping you just with motivation, all those sorts of things. So have a plan and also have somebody to be accountable to. And then lastly, don't expect that because you have a home gym, you're gonna use it. You need to use it. Just because you have a home gym, you built a home gym, doesn't mean you're magically gonna lose all these calories, you're gonna get, look super jacked. Like, no, that's not how it's gonna work. You're gonna have to actually put in time. Just because you have it in, the, in your domicile, doesn't mean you're gonna use it. So get out there and use it. Use what you've got. Don't worry about buying extra stuff, just use what you got. Having a home gym is cool, but like, <laughs> it's not decoration, all right? That's what it's so good for, is actually tools to better your life but it's only gonna better your life if you use it. Okay, this has been Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. Get out there and use your gym. Peace.